Hi, and welcome to Cockatoo, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 100, Fear, Obsession, and Indifference. You know, these guys are they're special, they're highly intelligent, but pretty much it's the same for all animals. There's three things that are going to get between you and training them, or communicating with them, or dealing with them in such a way as not to have problems. Okay, three basic things. If they're afraid, you've got a problem. Okay, if they want something and you're in between what they want and them, that's a problem. That causes aggression. Or if they just don't care to hear what you have to say. Okay, if they don't care about what you're saying, they're not going to be motivated. So, those are three important things that can get between you and your bird. And what we're going to talk about in this episode is ways to get around that. I'd like to take a moment to ask you for your support. We have what, 39 people supporting our videos and we have over 4,000 people watching them that we can tell uh, about 60 to 90,000 minutes a month being watched and only 39 people helping. So we really appreciate those people are who are helping, but we could use your support. If you go out to patreon.com slash Chloe Sanctuary, no space, Chloe Sanctuary, all one word, you can donate $1 an episode. That's twice a month. That's $24 a year. We really appreciate it. Help us take care of these guys and help us keep doing this, okay? So please, please, I urge you to do that. I know that um, everyone thinks the internet should be completely free, but can you imagine how television stations and radio stations would survive without advertising? Okay, we're not giving you any advertising um, directly. You get a little bit of that from uh, YouTube. Um, if you become a member, you can see our videos Without that, we'll give you a special link and a password so you can watch our videos without any commercials in higher definition, okay? And you can know that you're helping out these little guys. Right, Pippa? Right, Pippa? So we would appreciate any help you can give us. Right, Peaches? Right, Peach? Right, Peach? Right, Peaches? Peach, 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 peach. Hi, Peach. But first, let's talk about who's here, okay? Today we have Cod. No, <laughs> that's Lucy. Hi, Lucy. We got Lucy. And up here we got Pippa. And of course, we can't have Bob. You can hear him screaming in the background. And we have Cause. And over here is Laura Lai. Baby girl, there you are. And Coco the girl. Now there's a good one, Coco. We'll talk about her in desensitization. Getting around this fear of something, okay? Because that was the issue we had in here at one time in the studio. And then up there, what are you doing up there, Cecil? Now we got Cecil and Salamander. Also known as Job of the Hut. What are you doing? Vibrating little girl. I just have my hand sitting next to you. Don't know about this girl sometimes, just don't know about her. And Peaches, who kept getting on the floor, so she's on that perch that she really can't get down from. Well, she could, but it won't be easy. She gets this thing about wanting to be on the floor and you just spend your whole time picking her up and putting her back on the couch. That's not a problem when we're not video. Okay, let's talk a little bit. Before I took the class from Animal Training 101, Dr. Zellig's class, I did... No, 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 leave her alone. Come here. Now, this is a territorial thing. She's gotten a little territorial about this section down here. Not good, since Bob feels the same way, but... So as long as she's sitting up here and she's down in that spot, once you let this kind of thing develop, 
and you have it spread it out like I don't at this point it would be difficult for me to get her out of this territoriality that she's doing over here you want to nip it in the bud if you can so but when Coco when we first started doing these videos with Coco in here she would just scream and scream and scream you know squawking because these cameras are out you know you got cameras and audio equipment and all that stuff and she just had a fit now this is a technique you don't use much. What are you doing up there, Peaches? Peaches. Um, it's not one you want to use frequently, and it can cause a problem. Uh, but it's called flooding, okay? And that's when you just put them into it. It's like taking somebody and throwing them in the, in the pool and saying, swim, okay? So that's what we did with her. Put her in this room at first and just let her scream until she kind of wore out of it. She just eventually just became desensitized to them. Um, sometimes though it'll work the other way. If you try that you might actually make it worse. So it's not the first technique you want to try. And then what I did is that during the times that we'd be back here we used to spend a lot of time here. Now we spend most of it out in the aviary. It's raining today but we spend most of our time out there what I would do is put in one one camera setup and when she did stop making noise and staring at it, put in two and then I had three in here and then I had four. That's more of what we call systematic desensitization. This is where where you start getting them used to bits and pieces of what they're going to face. Okay, In this case, she got used to a camera here and then a camera over there and then a camera over there and by adding them one by one, it, we were able to get her used to it. I was able to get her used to it. So, so now here's some issues that you, you probably haven't thought about, and I didn't think about them too much before I took the uh, Animal Training 101 with Dr. Zellix, but when you're dealing with fear, now let's say that you have a bird that's scared to death. It could be any animal, but you've got a bird that's scared to death, and it's trying to get out that door, okay? And you get between it and the door where it needs to get out, you could have a major problem, okay? Because you, now you're in between what they want, which is get out of there. And at that point, they may do, they may do whatever they have to do. They may bite or nip at you or get hurt trying to get out the door. So you don't want fear if there's any way you can avoid it. So we'll talk about how you can get around fears. And then another one that's dangerous is they want something. Peaches, darn you. She's, she's doing everything she can to get to that floor. You don't need to be on the floor, little girl. You don't need to be. I'll put you back up there if you get on the floor. She's just going to ignore me anyway. Right, Peach? Silly bird. So you, they want something, all right? There's that piece of food they want that you just offered, and you pulled it away. Well, when you did that, you made, with these guys it's especially bad, but when you offer something and then you don't give it to them, that can cause aggression, okay? That's kind of like I say, hey, I'm going to give you a $100 bill, and then when you reach for it, I pull it back. You know how that feels, right? With these guys, that can be a real problems. You don't want to do that. It's also true of all animals. But with these particular animals that are peaceful by nature, that's it's breaking a major rule in their world. And every time you do these kind of things, you're withdrawing from the bank account, your relationship bank account. So if you take away, you know, you offer something, you take it away, or they see something they want and you push it away from them, you're creating a problem. Now, as far as indifference, you've got a bird, let's say you're trying to train it, and it's just sitting there looking around, it isn't interested, okay. It's just kind of paying attention to little things going on, isn't paying attention to you, chewing on the perch it's sitting on.
looking up at the ceiling, looking over at another bird in the room. That's a situation where you have to make yourself more interesting. So we'll talk about that. So let's start with fear first. And uh, as I was talking about Coco, that issue existed with Coco. Now with Cecil, Cecil does not like, or he has a bad reaction to, the Dremel. I have an electric Dremel, that's what I used to use on their, on their uh, toenails. It's foot switched, so that while you're working with the bird, if they suddenly turn towards the Dremel, where they might get hurt, just take your foot off the switch. I learned that from Dr. Jenkins. That's the kind of situation he has set up. So, so what I did is I, I now, when I do their nails, I, I do it one a day. So they get their nails done twice a month, but I only do one bird a day. And I have a board, I just put a, it's one of those dry erase boards, I put a little green dot by the bird I did that day and mark it down that I've done, done one. But every day now, I walk him and all the other birds by that little table that has the Dremel on it. Because I'm going to take them in there and spray them. I used to spray them in their cages or at a little perch outside as I moved them through in the morning to go from their night cages to their day cages. But now what I do is I go buy that for all of them. So every day all of them are exposed to the Dremel. They're all exposed to that station where they get the, the nail work done. And their beaks trimmed if needed, that kind of thing. What you're doing by exposing them a little bit each day to that is making it something common in their environment. So this, this kind of thing is called habituation, and what you're doing is you're making it no longer relevant. They're walking by it every day, nothing's happening, okay? So it's not really relevant. It's rare that they're actually going to get their nails done. It only happens twice a month. So you are habituating them to it. This is very similar to if you have a bird that doesn't like loud noises. You know how dogs don't like firecrackers and that kind of thing. You can use fireworks sounds at a low volume in a room, like on your Amazon Echo or something like that. You can put those sounds there so that they hear them, but just lightly in the background. And you slowly increase the sound until you know, they realize that it doesn't have any particular uh, negativity to it. The loud sounds aren't going to bother them anymore. You're slowly getting them used to these sounds by increasing them over time. And that's one way to do it. Now, there's also a thing called counter conditioning okay so and that would be if let's say if i were to take cecil in there and where he's going to get his nails done if i take him to that perch that's right there and i pet him and tell him what a good bird he is and give him a whole you know give him a little bit of a treat that doesn't have anything to do with him doing anything just basically bearing gifts to him here so that whenever he's what you're doing with this is exposing him so that every time that that item that he's afraid of is there, he's getting something positive at the same time. We call that counter conditioning. You're offering something counter to that negative, okay? So that's one thing you can do, is always make sure that when you have to present negative, you have to present something they are afraid of, or they don't want in their environment, that at the same time you're presenting something they like, okay? That's counter conditioning. Um, slowly getting them used to it, like with the sound, making the sound louder and louder and louder. That's that's habituation and making it something that's in the environment. It's non-threatening now. It's like it's just there. That's how Coco reacts to all these cameras. They're just not threatening anymore. In the beginning, it was oh no, there's cameras everywhere, like it was with with Chloe in the uh, Rumford baking powder can. Now, with flooding, it can work, um, but it's not something you want to try in the beginning. It's a situation where you can just take them into this situation. Um, for example, Bob wasn't used to being around a whole bunch of people, not all at once. He had been around like a bunch of children, but like being out and about in, a, in an environment. And uh, he, he had issues. He was, 
aggressive when he was in a situation where he was brought with new people. So I took him to the Renaissance Fair. That was flooding because he was just there, just people all over the place just coming up to him and it worked. It just, he was desensitized to it just because he was put in a situation where it was everywhere. People everywhere coming up and talking to him. Now, when you're using habituation, you know, exposing them little by little to something, or and, and also counter conditioning, where you're putting something positive in with that thing that they don't really like, that we call that sy systematic desensitization. You're using different tools in a systematic way to get them used to something. So, when you're dealing with fears, these are things you can use, okay? If you really want to understand this, I suggest you take Animal Training 101. Um, I'll put the link on the pay, on the screen here. Um, now, if you're in a situation where you've got something they want, okay, you, you've got a treat, and you're trying to get them to do something, like wave their foot, all right, and let's say they won't even lift their foot up, nothing's happening. But they see that you have this treat, okay? We call that baiting or luring. When you actually have something they want and you're holding it, okay? You can get aggression from that. You're offering and not giving. You're, you're, you're trying to get them to raise their foot, okay? So lift their foot a little bit. Lift their foot a little bit. You're tapping their foot. You're trying to just get them to move it. Get them to move around and they aren't doing anything. At that point, your best bet is to do something that they normally know how to do. So like say, step up, if they know how to do, step up, step up, step up, step up, have them do it three times, give them the treat, put them back down, start over again. Go through this a couple of times. If it doesn't work, if they if they just don't get it that time, end your session on a, like a step up, give them a treat, and finish it, all right? The trick here is when they want something, you don't want to be the one stopping them from getting it. Now, let's say they want to eat your drapes, okay? And that's when you're going to go into using a differential reinforcement, right? You're going to give them something, an alternate, an alternate, like DRA, you're going to give them an alternate thing to chew on, a towel or something else they can chew on. So when they want to chew on that, you get them something else that will still fulfill that, something else that is either equally as interesting or more interesting, all right? Right, Pippa? We haven't gone after Steve Jobs. That's your job. Why haven't you gone after Steve? You don't know? Is Lorelai making you nervous? Yeah, Lorelai, you'd be nice to her. You'd be nice to this little girl. She doesn't go after you anymore. She doesn't. You guys are too quiet. Wake up over there. Cecil? Sea salt. Cecil. <whistles> Hello, Earth to Cecil. You guys are like lumps on the, you know, well, you guys are like knots on wood here. You're not doing anything. They're so quiet. You're vibrating. You're a little too... You're a little bit too uh, hyper. You're acting a little crazy. I don't know what's going on. So when you're in a situation where you're trying to train a bird or let's say you've got something by you they want to get to. Let's, for example, I, I know this story. I know somebody who said that, you know, they, that whenever they were typing on their computer, the bird would come over and try to get to the keyboard. That can be a problem because now you have a keyboard they're trying to get to. Now the, the real key is knowing whether it's, they're trying to stop you from messing around with the keyboard or if they want the keyboard. Okay. If they want you, then you need to find some way to give them what they want. So maybe sit them on your lap, put them on your shoulder if you're comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with it, but you know, you could get bit if you don't know what you're doing. So if they want the keyboard, then you need to find something that's more interesting than the keyboard for them. Okay. I don't suggest giving them a keyboard, giving them like a throwaway keyboard, because then you're just increasing that idea. Give them something similar, like one of those toy uh, cell phones or something that has buttons on it, that looks similar but not the same. Find something else to replace it with, and when they want that, put it right next to you so you have something to play with. 
maybe one of those toys that has little buttons on it that makes sounds. Uh, Peaches has one that says, I love you and hello and that kind of thing. All right. Or her little puppy piano, something like that. Something they can do next to you. It's, since it makes sounds and that kind of thing, it should be more interesting. Now, these are just some general ideas. These are some general ideas based on uh, applied behavior analysis and you know, psychology theory. Uh, they work. They definitely work. Um, I'll tell you, too, here's a good, another good example of how I'm using this now. Oh, I'm sorry. I know that one follicle here. It just bugs you, doesn't it? We'll have the vet look at that, too. She's got a feather that is just is not right. Whenever you try to preen it, she goes, eh. Don't you? So I'll tell you some of the ways I've used it since I've started working with this principle more from the uh, Zellix class. Um, Cecil started getting nippy out in the aviary. He'd start come up, coming up behind me and nipping my ear. He wasn't biting me hard, but it could have developed into that. And the reason he was doing that is because whenever he's trying to get with Lorelei so he could mate with her, you note that Cecil's up there and Lorelei's over there. Oh, that's pure luck. Normally when they're in the same room, they won't leave each other alone. But so what I've been doing is I have a I put a little bag out there now. And what the bag has in it is just I just fill it up with a bunch of toys. And when they start to play their little games, come over and start to preen each other, I will hand Cecil a toy. He finds the toy more interesting, believe it or not, than trying to mate with, with Lorelei. So what he'll do is play with the toy. As soon as he gets a toy, Lorelei knows, uh-oh, he's going to start being not so... Nah. He becomes Cecil Hyde when he has a toy. Lorelei knows that. She knows that she better run and hide because he's going to start whacking everyone around him with the toy. So... He does that. He starts whacking everybody around with a toy. Hi there, Pip Pip. He starts whacking everybody with the toy, and she runs off. Eventually, he gets tired of the toy, throws it down, then she comes back over. Then I give him a toy, and the whole cycle starts again. Okay? So, in this case, the toy is more interesting to him, and the toy pushes her away. So, you have to try different things until you find something that works. But basically, you're looking for a way to draw his interest off of her. And that was getting between him and her. Uh, that was not working. And he was coming up behind me, sneaking up behind me and nipping at my ear. Eventually, it would have drawn blood. Now, it's not a problem. The only issue that I've found is that these two will try to get under the chair where I'm sitting. So I have to make sure that I can see them at all times because they'll try to sneak under the chair together. Kind of like teenagers, you know? Yeah, right? Good. I think I have stone statues. These are not real birds. These are just stone statues. What are you guys so quiet for? They were clamoring to get out. They all wanted to come in here. It was the only thing they... I mean, Peaches was singing her arias, and Coco was making her little... She has a little sound she makes. She goes... Like that. Coco was doing that. Cecil was barking um, <coughs> and squawking. Salamander was making his little uh, sound from Dumb and Dumber. Lorelei was, was throwing fits. This one over here was jumping up and down and wanting to get out, climbing up the side of her cage. They come in here, and this one was playing with toys, but they're just dead. It's like, I, these guys are just like little stone statues. I feel like I'm in a topiary. I do. Now, it's been basically true that whenever we brought in a new bird, like Pippa, they don't get along with the other birds terribly well. And at first, getting a bird within two feet of Pippa was asking for trouble. And now she'll sit right next to most birds. Even Bob, out in the aviary, this is not a problem. In here, I can do it. I can have them in the same room, but only when I'm free. I don't have anything else to bother me. Uh, 
I can't be doing a video or something like that because I can't be stretching my attention. I've got to make sure that nothing happens. He's really, like she is here, he's territorial on the spot. I'm going to work that out over time, but right now, and the best way for me to do that is simply change the situation around. Um, so I'll either have to get, sit somewhere else, which you know, there's no place to do that, but um, maybe sit at the end of the couch so that this spot is no longer here. Okay. I've got to somehow get Bob out of defending the couch. And he tends to defend this area alone. Although he's trying to spread his territory this way. Hmm. Oh. And is that right? Is that right, Cause? It is? Well, thank you for doing something. You've done something. Nobody else in here is doing anything. They're just sitting around. Hi. Well, hello. Well, hello, Pippa. Hi, Pippa. Hi, Pip. How's my Pip Pip? Well, how are you? Thank you for doing something, little girl. It's getting awful quiet in here. I'm the only one talking. Now with Roman, he was afraid of uh, paper towels and squirt bottles. So basically cleaning supplies. So you kind of get an idea where he'd been before this had been an issue. So the way I dealt with the squirt bottles, which when he saw one, he ran to the back of the cage and fear was, I've talked about this before, but this is, a, this is a case of slowly squirting him just a little bit, a little bit each day, one or two squirts, you know, basically your best bet is one squirt, two squirts, three squirts, four squirts over time, until eventually he was wanting to bath. So now when he sees the squirt bottle, he wants a bath, and they don't bother him. With paper towels, which he was afraid of, um, I started by him using habituation, basically having them in his environment where he could get to them himself, and he just tear them up. He still does that. He likes to tear up paper towels. So He has a spot where he goes to and he tears up paper towels. And instead of being afraid of them, he now attacks them, which is fine. He's not attacking anything that's going to matter, but he will attack paper towels which is a big change. At least it's, it's, it shows that he has some um, strength of personality, right? Now, another thing with Roman is he has cage territoriality. Now, that's not so much to your hands, but there are things you can't bring next to the cage. Um, if you're going to use a paper towel to clean the bottom of his cage, he's aggressive towards paper towels now. He's not afraid of them anymore, but he's aggressive towards them. So, if you're going to clean his cage, you got to use something else. And I have a scrubber on a stick. I basically took just a little scrubber, the kind of thing you scrub dishes with, that kind of thing, and put it on the end of a stick. And so I use that to clean his cage, and I talk to him while I'm doing it. And that, that works, but... Yeah? Yeah? So in summary, you have to deal with fear, and you don't want to be blocking their way of getting out, okay, with fear. Um, there's fixation or obsession where they want something, and you're between them and it, like with Cecil trying to get to Lorelei, or you've got a treat that you don't give them, um, then you can get aggression from that. And also territoriality, right? Okay. And they're, they're possessive of their, their territories, another issue there. And lack of interest. Okay. But they're disinterested in what you're doing. These are three things that are going to make communicating with your bird difficult. You have to deal with them. And basically, you're going to deal with them using habituation. You're going to desense, desen which is basically exposing them to it until it, in, in small bits, bits and pieces of it, until they no longer are concerned about it. It's no longer a threat. 
counter conditioning where you're exposing them to something, but also exposing them to something more positive. Okay. Maybe their favorite treat while they're next to the nail trimmers, that kind of thing. And systematic desensitization where you're using counter conditioning and habituation to get through to them. Okay. Right. And sometimes flooding will work. Sometimes just taking them into the environment works. But you gotta be careful with that one. Right? All right, Pippa? You wanna say goodbye to the people? Wanna say goodbye to the people? Say goodbye, Pippa. Say bye bye. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. <laughs> the Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shape. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots? Let them roam around about you and share a life with them. Of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. So science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower.